Hello, and this is Motor City Aquatics. Welcome to our Monday night stream. We are going to uh, feed some Celestial Pearl Danios right now. See if we can get them out. I'm sure they're starving. I'm sure they're starving. Here it comes down. Um, hopefully they come out. They will come out. I have the camera on it. So up oh, here it comes one. Usually once one comes out, <clears throat> they all come out. It's like, you know, one calls the rest to come hang out. But uh, they're all pretty hungry, all my shell dwellers. Um, everything's pretty hungry. So we're going to feed them up pretty good tonight. Um, they're in the live stream here. Mm -hmm. I knew uh see if I need to put more in this show dollar tank right here. They're not going crazy for me. Oh, there but with no uh that's one thing I like about um not having the dual sponge filters running anymore is uh the the food takes a really long time to get down there, so uh, um, I don't have to worry about it just uh, crashing into the substrate, fish not ever finding out that it was there. Um, because once they smell it, they can come around. And as you can see, uh, <clears throat> um, you know, it's moving around real slow in there, and there's no filter. So... Pretty good. See the guppies over here. I'll turn the light on more here in a minute. Move the camera more. But, uh, trying to, I was hoping that they'd come out. I fed them earlier. Uh, turn, uh, I Well, maybe they had enough food from earlier. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We'll wait uh, till we get some more people in here. Wait a little bit uh, before we get on to the topic. Like I said, I just put this on here for a second. To see, it's like it's a crazy. This thing is weird, you know, and I'm wondering is, uh, I don't know what the deal was, about, uh, about a week ago, the freezer, my little freezer down here, for some reason, there's so many things frozen, but it was the stuff that was on the door was starting to thaw, and uh, I had to uh, throw a bunch of stuff away, that was for the discus and stuff, I didn't need it anymore, but this was one of the things that was thawed out. I hope it's not bad. The other fish are eating it. The multi-fasciitis. Let me see if I can put the camera on the multi. <laughs> Maybe these guys need a water tank. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know.
The only Oscars. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, the Maltese, they're all out. You know, they, they love that stuff. I could probably feed them a bunch more. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, like I say, I don't know. Maybe it's just a uh, more water. Because what I'm doing is I'm uh, siphoning it out of a glass cup. Uh, that I, uh, thought, thought it out. <coughs> so see there, you guys, square it in there. They come out. The heat looks really good. Upland Creek, <laughs> I love shrimp. Yeah, I love shrimp. Only Oscars, hey, get this. Those shells in there, I put those shells in there to, uh, you know, give a place to do their hiding and stuff. And yeah, I put that, that rock in the back is a big, huge uh, crystal. Um, when I was a kid growing up, I had uh, I had a neighbor who would uh, um, who uh, collected special rocks. I don't know, he was like a rock house or something. Well, they moved all of a sudden. He had to hurry up and move. I don't know what his deal was, but I asked him, "Hey, can I have them rocks?" And he said, "Yeah." He had a tree in his backyard, uh, like a big shrub, and there I. 50, 60 special rocks under there. So I went and took a whole bunch. And like the next day, the new owners were moving into the house. So I have all these special rocks. They're just incredible. I don't even know what, what they all are. But, um, but anyways, that's one of them. And I put it in there. And as you see, they mounted all around the top. Because it's kind of like they don't even care about uh, the shells. The, the babies all hang out, but the parents, they go inside the, that big, huge rock underneath it. They dug out from underneath it, and they live in that big, huge rock. So when you go to, uh, you know, walk up, look into the tank, you'll see probably 40, 50 of the fry come out from underneath that, that rock. Uh, so they don't even, uh, uh, the parents, they don't even go under the shell. So, as you see, all the little babies laying in the back. Give what you could, oh. Trying to help somebody out. Yeah, yeah I just want to get a little feeding on it, no. Here's the thing is, you know, trying to get these guys down hot as to how much to feed and how much not to feed is really hard <laughs> because, uh, you know, they're little, you know, and you don't want to overfeed put too much in the thing. Um, you know. Right. A couple of the things that just not responding like they should. So, yeah, those little fish in the back, yeah, those are the fry. Yeah, the bigger ones. Uh, and look, this camera's pretty closed. I, I didn't want to really move it because they would have they would got scared and ran. So I just hooked it on there really quick. But um, having out having them on black substrate, I think they look great. Um, 
I, I think it brings their colors out more. As you see, they're pinkish. They got the nice, really blue eyes. Their stripes really stick out. You know, having them on white substrate, uh, white sand, they look real pretty too. But, uh, you know, I'm going to be different because it seems like most people that I see that have them, they have them on the white sand or something along the lines of a lighter sand. So I wanted to put them on a black because they are so pretty. Also, it, it lets the, the shells, you know, the shells get, show off really well. Um, they're not... Uh, uh, they're not um, washed out by the white sand and everything. So it uh, it works pretty darn good. I I think it's, you know, it's something different, but I really love them. I, all my Shelly's are on black and my uh, CPDs by Peplin. I have them on uh, 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 Fluval Stratum, I think. <clears throat> so they're in super soft water. I don't know. They just ended up in super soft water. Yeah, it's they are different ages. I don't take the parents out. <clears throat> I don't take any of them out. Um, it's just babies after babies after babies after babies. They don't eat. They don't eat their fry. None of my Shellys eat their fry. Um, I don't. I don't take any of them out. They just. They all stay in there. But, you know, what's it been? I don't know, three, four weeks, uh, no air. You know, I do water changes. That's a, They're in a 15-gallon, so I might take out, you know, two gallons or something and, uh, and uh, um, you know, do a water change with it. But um, uh, other than that, uh, you know, they, they do great. What's that? Had a tank of multis crash. I mean, a couple weeks ago, no clue what it was. Oh, man, that sucks. Um, one thing that I know, well, if you need more, dude, let me know. I'll take care of you. Uh, you see that I got a couple. <laughs> um, one thing that I do do, do do, he said do do. I'm not talking about do do. Um, one thing that I made sure of when I put this tank together is that there were no snails. Um, I I want like no snails in any of my uh, small fish tanks due to the fact that if there's die off, it will kill everything in the tank. Um, oh, hold on a minute. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to switch my water real quick. My alarm went off, and I stinking forgot to go over there and do it. Uh, okay. Let me uh, start my alarm. There we go. But, uh, yeah, I make sure I have no snails. Because if snails start to die, it's going to kill the whole tank. You know, it just sucks that, uh, you know, let it, <laughs> they they spook. Multi-spook pretty darn easy. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, you just got to just gotta make sure there's no snails. I mean, Pleco, cool. Snails, no bueno. Uh, you know, because if you're not feeding, you know, look at all these fish in here. If I feed a small amount of crushed up tri uh, tropical color granules, um, they attack it. If I put the baby brine in there, <clears throat> they attack it. I try to feed small amounts, about every five minutes, 10 minutes, uh, you know, stuff like that. So, um, uh, but, uh, you know, if you don't have enough food to feed snails, they'll start, they'll die and they'll create a big, huge ammonia spike in the tank. Um, you know, just like snails or I mean, shrimp, same thing. Shrimp start or snails start dying in the tanks to kill the whole tank off. 
it only takes one or two. If you have a real big ram's horn snail and it dies, good luck. You just lost the whole tank, you know, for nothing over over a stinking uh, snail. That wasn't worth two bits, you know. So uh, those are things that I watch out for. Those are things that I pay attention to. Now, now look, there's not even a plant in here. There's no plants in here. Uh, I'm not doing that on purpose. I just uh, never, I haven't gotten around to putting anything in it. I just shut it off, shut the air off. And, uh, you know, there's, like I said, there's nothing dying in here. So, um, uh, you know, no plants. Look at them. They're even doing their little mating dance there on the left. You know, they're all playing around and stuff. They don't. Healthy tanks, bro. You know, healthy tanks. You know, but uh, yeah, that's it. I mean, I'm no, I'm no pro. You know, uh, I just, uh, you know, watch. I, you know, I, I listen to my fish. You know, they talk to you. Um, I know it sounds silly, but uh, you know, they'll let you know. Hey, something's going on. Like I said, these other two tanks. Oh, there's all the CPDs are all out now, boy. Making me look bad, but still. It can get a, uh, I'll let uh, Peplin see his babies. <clears throat> All right. Uh, this crappy camera, man. Sorry about this. I can't control it. Uh, <clears throat> hold on. That's one thing I hate about the streaming. If I just, if once I hit a thousand subscribers, I won't have this problem anymore. I'll be able to control my camera from what I'm streaming from, but <clears throat> these are the CPDs that I got out of Pepple Creek. They're incredible. I'm, I'm getting ready to uh, do the do the dance. I'm going to set a tank up next to this tank, an empty tank, and uh, <clears throat> start to uh, start my breeding um, project and uh, see how that comes out. I talked to a guy who Used to breed hundreds of them. The females are pretty fat in here, boy. So, yeah, males are getting. Dude, when you sent me the when they sent me the fish, the males were so colored up, but the females are getting real prego. Um, you know, I don't overfeed them. I feed them, you know, once, maybe twice a day. It depends on, uh, you know. Uh, when I come home and the hours and stuff. But as you see the tank spotless they have tons of moss i mean it's probably i don't know two pounds of moss in there but uh i gotta set up the other tank for them but look at them all they'll just come out they just have so much fun in the in the moss man so colorful sorry the bright the lights are real bright so but yeah these are his uh <clears throat> These are the ones that I got. But, yeah, the males are, you know, super, super dark and colorful. And, uh, like I said, the females are real big. So, they should be ready to lay. So, uh, I just have to set up. Uh, I have to move one of the shrimp tanks that's next to it. And, because uh, um, I want to put it right next to it. And uh, make room for a 10-gallon. I might just put a... T I don't know. I might put one on the bottom shelf. I have so much room because I have so many tanks that I took down. Um, I don't have an issue with uh, finding find places. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you. Hey, so uh, are, your, uh, are the Kaigomas getting big? Had the multi three years. So I don't need them again. Loving the Kaigomas. I'm glad that you like the Kaigomas. I'm really sorry about the size. I had to send them to you. Because uh, the first set I sent to you that didn't make it, um, uh, 
those were the biggest. You know, they just have, you know, batch after batch after batch. Well, you know, they're all so small. Now they're bigger, you know, but out of both tanks, they were all about the same size. So, yeah, the Kaigomas are beautiful. Growing fast. Good, good, good. Very glad, very glad. Very happy. Uh, only Oscars, were you asking me? Uh, do I have no air? Yeah, none of my tanks have air anymore. Um, I shut it all off. <clears throat> yeah, look at that male chasing that female. Perfect set right there, you know. But they're all real big, so they all must be just ready to have babies, so. Or lay eggs, I should say. But... Yeah, really, really, real cool. Has C. Catahoulis, what is happening? Welcome, welcome. Explain why you don't need air, please. <laughs> because I have special Superman fish tanks that uh, have super water in them. Um, no, uh, here's the thing. Um, uh, I don't know. Long time ago, it, it's you know, it's a long story. <clears throat> but, you know, ever since I was a little kid, you know, growing up in the mountains, Pennsylvania, you know, you, you'd always see like little puddles or something, you know, you, you'd see these drains that would uh, <clears throat> dry up, you know, and there'd be fish in them. No air, you know, it's just what was in the water, you know, and they live forever. They live until that puddle would dry up. I mean, never die. Um <clears throat> Uh, and, um, you know, it was, I, I always wondered, you know, oh man, how much, how much air is in that water? Well, see fish, you know, breathe with their gills. <clears throat> so, um, you know, just because we don't see the oxygen doesn't mean that the oxygen is not in the water. Um, so, uh, when you drink water, um, you know, it oxygenates your blood. It, it uh, you know, um, rehydrates you. You know, there's a whole bunch of positive, uh, you know, things from drinking water. Well, there is a lot of oxygen that's in water. When you put water in a tank, uh, when you put water in a bucket to put to a tank. When you transfer water from point A to point B, you know, um, it creates, you know, oxygen gets in it, what have you, this and that. Well, when you put it in a tank, the amount of oxygen in, a, in the water is so enormous that these fish are so small and minute, nano, if you want to, if you want to call it, um, that they don't burn up all the oxygen that's in this water. And if you do a slight water change weekly to every two weeks, uh, you keep that oxygen at such a high level. I mean, look at them. They don't go to the top. They, they just love it. I've changed water on this since he sent them to me one time. I don't know. I've had them, I don't know, a couple months maybe. One time I've done water change. And it's so small, 
but it's just to add oxygen back to the water. Now that I'm not running, I don't run oxygen on none of my tanks anymore. The only tanks that get it are the tanks with the big fish. Now, big fish need oxygen, you know, because they poop a lot. You know, they move a lot. They're larger, you know, and if you have them in a small, uh, you know, body of water, you know, they're going to burn up the oxygen. These guys are so small in a 15-gallon tank that it's like they're in a lake. You know, so there's so much oxygen in here, they won't, you know, and if, you know, I I change it every once in a while, you know, 10% or whatever, they'll love it. Uh, so I always had this uh, thought process that th that's what you could do, you know, but I was always afraid because they always said, oh, you know, this, that's like blasphemy. You can't do that. It's the worst thing in the world. You can't shut the air off. The fish will die. The fish will die. The fish will die. So then I ran into a guy called LRB. What's up, Bobby from Michigan? Vibes Aquatics. Welcome, welcome. Glass box hero, Danny. So uh, I don't know anyone actually hooks up an oxygen tank in their aquarium. <laughs> um, uh, um, so I ran into a guy named LRB. And, you know, uh, he had no filters, but he had sponge filters then you know after a while he set a sponge filters off then he went you know filterless he like went bottomless and topless he went to a a nude beach so but <clears throat> his tanks with his big fish in them he has those power heads which moves the water on top and releases the gas and creates the oxygen transformation so that helps there. Plus, all of his tanks are packed with uh, plants, um, which helps eat up any uh, bad stuff, you know, ammonia, nitrogen, uh, uh, you know, anything that's in the water. Um, so, but as you just saw, my multi-tank has no filter, has not, I mean, it has no plants. No filter has nothing, and they just continue to keep having babies. But uh, the thing is, is you know, you have to, you know, you, you can't overfeed, you just can't overfeed. If you overfeed, you're gonna, you know, you could kill them because all that food's gonna sit and rot, um, you know, and you don't want that to happen. So if you overfeed, you're gonna, you, you know, you'll kill your, you'll kill your animals. So that's what you don't want to do, but. You know, for the longest time, I tried. I tried LRB's thing. You know, I did it with shrimp for eight months. You know, I, I did it with a few things. I just couldn't get myself to, it was like smoking. It was so hard to quit. You know, I was like, man, I can't shut this off. I shut this off. You know, it's going to go crazy. I don't, I don't want to do this. Oh, I'm so scared. And so I said, you know what? Forget it. I'm done being scared. I'm done having someone else control my life. So uh, I shut it off. I cut the plug. And here's, I mean, it, to be honest, here's the reason, you know. I run dehumidifiers, you know, all winter long uh, that are expensive. Then I run, you know, the furnace all winter long. Uh, see, now I just put more in. I put some in, what, 15 minutes ago or 20 minutes ago or almost a half hour ago. So now I'm putting in more. Um, you know, now I have to run the pool all summer. So the less stuff that I have to run that I could drop my electric bill down, um, you know, the better. So if I could cut down everything, get rid of my air pumps, the filters, you know, get rid of everything and have all my animals super healthy and happy. Um, I just have to pay attention to how I take care of them and do it the right way. Um, then there's, uh, you know, there's not an issue. Now I'm saving so far. I'm down to, uh, I think I'm down to, it's still not low enough. I think I'm down to like 240 and I was at three, 360, I think. Um, 
I don't run my lights as much anymore, but you know, there's, I don't know. There's a few things that were questionable. You know, every electrician I talked to says, well, you shouldn't be, uh, your bill shouldn't be that high with running air pumps and lights and, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, uh, you know, I don't know. So it's, uh, what I'm trying to do is shut everything off and see what takes the biggest jump. You know, I even went as far as I had an electrician ask me, well, Hey, do you pull your fuses out or your, uh, yeah, your fuses out outside on your air com- air conditioner? I said, no, why would I do that? And he said, uh, because it can still pull a draw. Uh, and he said his parents, he's disconnected. And so he disconnects it. He said, but usually if there's a continuous draw, like they were telling me, um, that it's probably in an appliance. Well, the only appliances that are left that are not brand new when I bought the house is the furnace, the air conditioner and the stove. Everything else is brand spanking new. So, um, The stove isn't hot, you know, it doesn't stay warm or anything like that. So I don't think it's that, but that air, that air compressor or that air, uh, AC unit outside, you know, something could be pulling from that. I mean, so I have shut the breaker off to that. So, um, that can't get any power. So our next bill, we'll see how far that goes down. And if that was it, then I'll know, but, uh. That's that's uh, one of the big reasons why I shut everything off is to save money. You know, I had 60-some shrimp tanks, fish tanks. You know, I got a 125-gallon, you know, 32 bio cube, 40-gallon uh, breeder. And then I had 60, like 67 shrimp tanks, you know, and the bill was getting up there. A lot of lights, a lot of, you know, the the air pumps, you know, and I was like, you know, it's, this is great, but it's cost me a lot. You know, I'm not, I'm not always making all the money to pay for the bills, you know? Uh, and that's why I said all the money I make from shrimping and selling nano fish will pay my bills. Well, if things are slow and I'm not selling nothing, well, then I'm paying the bills. And if I have to pay the bills and I'm not happy about it, you know, I'd rather, uh, you know, you know, it's, it's use the money on other stuff. I don't want to, I don't want to have something in my house that's just sucking up a bunch of energy. You know, I don't need uh 50, 60 tanks. If I can't, if I can't get a business out of it and it's not as big, you know, maybe where I'm at, I'm just not able to, uh, get enough, uh, you know, uh, purchasers. So if I'm not able to do it and make enough money, then I just won't keep them all. So, I mean, I, I've already been, I've been going through this for about six months, deciding what I'm going to do. Um, you know, what I would keep, what I get rid of. So my big thing is, uh, you know, I've been cutting back, see if I can save power, save money. And if I can do that, then, you know, I won't get rid of anything. And then, uh, you know, just keep trying to find out ways to uh, save money. Isn't the air oxygen? Yes, the air is oxygen. That's why I was saying when LRB runs his power heads and it churns the top of his water, it, uh, it, it releases gases and, you know, creates oxygen in the water. Yes, you are correct. Only Oscar says, I unplug everything I'm not using. Yeah, well, see, the thing is, is I never thought, my father used to do it too, but I never thought that um, pulling the, those fuses out of the air conditioner outside was a uh, was a necessity. Now, I, I could have swore that my father always flipped the breaker on it, but I don't know. You know, because here's the thing with it being hooked to your air conditioner, I mean, your uh, thermostat in your house, who knows, there might be something that, you know, I don't know if the, if my thermostat's bad and it's causing a draw, it's trying to pull from it or something. I don't know. So anyways, I flipped the breaker. So hopefully that, that uh, cures it and helps me out and stuff like that. So still water, air has oxygen. 
but it's also a lot more than that. Yes, there's there's a lot. Craig Donner, Craig's Catfish Cave. Love catfish. What is happening? Aqua balls. Don't get angels if you want. Save money. Oh, I've had angels so many times, George. Uh, they're not expensive. Um, I don't know. I remember we used to have 50 breeders upstairs. Because, see, we started with all the fish tanks upstairs. You know, we had a couple. I had an octagon. It had a cube. And then... Then we switched them to 50 breeders. And then, you know, we brought the 50 breeders down here, then a 90 gallon, then, you know, 120 gallon, then like 40, 20 longs. And I mean, it just got really crazy. So, uh, yeah, angels uh, to me aren't, aren't expensive. They're, they're a beautiful fish. Vibes Aquatics. Fashion Tanktics, welcome, welcome. Hello, how are you? You can shut it off. Fashion Tanktics. All right, so it, since we saw that, and you guys have, <clears throat> have that little clue, let me kick this side of the, of the fish room back on, or shrimp room. I, I cut it off because of the glare. <laughs> Drop this down. Whoa, whoa. Bring it around. Bring it around downtown. Julie Brown. You guys remember Julie Brown from MTV? Downtown Julie Brown. Welcome. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? It's just me. Motor City. Went fishing today again. Got nada yet. It was a sad day in the neighborhood. Um, I did really didn't go because, I, I mean, look, can't say you don't want to catch stuff. But my main thing was is uh, I wanted to try out some new baits. Um, a new pole I bought just, uh, just because. Um, and that's it. You know, no, nothing major. Um just uh you know get out of the house man i haven't been out of the house in so long i've been working so i just need some time need some time alone out and alone so those puckos went out to ground me today oh what's the substrate oh the substrate in there was a uh, fluval stratum Hey, can you guys hold on a minute? I'll be right back. <clears throat>
Alright, I'm very sorry about that. Sorry, didn't mean to do that. Uh, my mother's dementia, she's, uh, some days she has it really bad, so, um, some days she becomes argumentative. Not with me, she listens when I ask her to do stuff, but with my wife or anything like that, she, she just wants to fight, so she doesn't want to, uh, she doesn't want to do what you ask. I just hope it doesn't get to a spot to where, uh, you know, it's going to be put in uh, um, assisted living because it's getting worse. So, what is that? Bradley's 2292. Welcome, welcome. Welcome for showing up. Thank you for showing up. Liquid Zoo, you are crazy, son. I've been, dude, I've been at 820 for freaking a month. And then I went to 818, then back to 819. You know how they fool with you. Jerry's going to catch up, dude. So that's all there is to it. I, I do not have a uh, scaredy cat hair on my arm that tells me that I'm going to lose to Jerry. So everyone, make sure you go over and uh, hit that subscribe button at Papa Shrimp. <laughs> and uh, make sure we get him to 1000 because if we get him to 1000 before I get to 1000 I get 30 bucks. I do, I do not have a worry in the world. See, here's the thing. I work way more than Jerry does. Jerry streams a lot more than I do because he's on the morning show. He's doing this. He's doing that. So he'll get way more subscribers. He doesn't know that he's hurting himself doing all that uh, cool stuff. <laughs> he just doesn't know. And I'm not telling him I'm actually winning. I will not tell him. But 820, I've been stuck at 820 for... I don't know, two months. So. Plecos, plecos, plecos. Love plecos. I'm waiting for my um, long fin, super red. Bristle nose to uh man, I gotta I gotta get him outside or something because uh I thought they were gonna be perfect for um in uh in the 125, but since I turned the 125 into a, a very aggressive tank, um I'm afraid that if I leave him in there that the pike will eat him. So I took him out. I have him in the 32 gallon uh um uh, with uh, uh, with uh, uh, goldfish, but the bad thing is, is the goldfish eat so much of the food that the pike just ain't getting. Uh, I mean, that the, the bristle nose just aren't getting filled. So what I think I'm going to do is uh, put them out in the tub. I got a forty gallon uh, tub, black tub. I could put out in the shade. Put a uh, put a screen top on it. And, uh, you know, just, uh, do water changes on it every once in a while, but go out there and, you know, just, you know, feed them and uh, try to get them growing faster out there. Um, you know, it's green water, algae, all this and that, you know, because uh, um, we've been waiting a long time. Yeah, I have the, the bristle or the albinos down here, the babies. God, so much poop in there. I haven't even fed them. It's, uh, I don't advise keeping, um, bristlenose in small tanks. It's really hard. Uh, it's a lot of cleaning. When I am in the 125, you never had to clean it. You know, they're in the 125. So all their poop and everything goes into substrate, breaks down. Um, you know, there's nothing negative about it. Uh, but, uh, in small tanks, yeah. In the 125, I got probably, I don't know, 100 plecos a month out of that tank you know they live with their babies now so they're not you know once they have babies they're not having any more they're growing up so 
Um, once these super reds get bigger, I think I'm going to do maybe, I, I don't know, a hundred gallon. And, uh, I don't know. I'm going to have to figure it out. I have the parents in a smaller tank, maybe a 50 breeder, 40 breeder, have them in there and just keep dumping all the babies in a large tank. You know, it's probably the best, probably what I'm going to do. Cause I mean, I'm like a, a Pleco magnet. I don't know what it is, but I can breed Plecos. Like I wish I could print dollar bills, you know, but uh, it's just my water. I have really soft water, you know, so they go crazy, but. Glass box hero is 69 away from 500. Please, if you are not subscribed to Danny's channel, please go over to glass box hero and hit the subscribe. Terry's tropical tanks. What up? What up? What up? Good to see you in here. Shit left my phone out the front. Ha! We're just um, debating, debate, debate, debate who the third snail in our bed was. <laughs> Yellowstone, good to see you. Good to see you. Y'all hear that shiver in his voice? Yeah, yeah, you hear a shiver. Oh, what's up, uh, Liquid Zoo? Yeah, I thought you were, uh, I heard you mention it. It was pretty funny. Um, uh, the comment you made the other day about having somebody on your channel or something, you were going to stop streaming, then they. Say you're gonna have somebody on your channel, so you decide to start streaming again, and they never showed up. <laughs> I was like, man. But anyways, yeah, last two days I took off work, so I went fishing a little bit with Luke yesterday. He rode a scooter around while I went fishing. Nothing grass was growing all the way up to the top of the water, and there's big bass in this place, but uh, nothing. I'm no big angler, so it's not like I know how to fish every lure and stuff. I, you know, I've fished bread balls in the mountains of Pennsylvania, caught trout. You know, I'm not, I just like to go. You know, that's it. I just like to go, even if I catch nothing. <laughs> Pop shrimp, please sub. Yeah, go to Pop shrimp and sub. Hey, if there's anyone on here that's close to a number, um, that they're only a couple way uh posted up here. Um so uh you know maybe people could come over to your channel and uh subscribe. Uh I saw that the other day. Um uh Blizzle, Blizzle and them guys did it the other day, and that was pretty cool because there'd be like somebody was short like 10 or something. Everybody went over there and get got them the 10. So Terry says, what soft water? Is that like unicorns? Yes, time to break out the frogs. Yep, I'm seeing 834. Wait, is that a drop of sweat? Yeah, right, 834, my ass. Vibes Aquatic says that they are sub to pop shrimp. Excellent, excellent. Hey, what? Can you call me yeah. Can you call my phone? <laughs> I will call your phone, sweetheart. For $2. All right. Filming. I will. It's calling. <laughs> she don't know where her phone's at. I don't hear it either. All right. She found it. Oh, my phone's going to die, but it's okay. I don't care. I just hit 453. Wow, Mississippi hippie. Way, what's up? Hey, at Motor City Quacks, I'm at 180 again, close to 200. Well, there you go. Uh, if everyone that's in the in the uh, chat can go over to Mississippi hippie and uh, bump her numbers up. She's super close to 200. That'd be super, super cool. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, try to help her out, get up to that 200. 200 is a great milestone. What in the... <laughs> 
Liquid Zoo says, oh, I just saw 834. That's impossible. I went over. It says 834. When today it was 819. Just before I started to scream. This is a bunch of crap. I don't know what's going on, but uh, the only thing I can think of. Well, here's one. Is uh, is uh, George still in here? Yeah, Mississippi Hippie. Uh, yeah, check her channel out. Super cool. See, here's the thing. Uh, I don't know. I don't belong to a fish fam. I don't. It's just, I don't know, kind of a, a lone wolf, you know? I don't belong to a, a club, a gang, you know, not, it's a gang, but, uh, you know how it is. I ride alone, you know, uh, it's how, it's how I like to do business. Um, I like to be outside of everybody, um, and be everyone's friend. I don't want to be in the middle and everyone's surrounding me. I don't, I don't like that. Um. I don't know. I like to do things on my own. Uh, I get more um, satisfaction out of it. So instead of, you know, me belonging to a bunch of people, you know, there's a group and that group all comes in and hit subscribe. What I, I would love that. But then I'd sit back and go, you know, well, I didn't earn it. You know, it was just. But being a part of something is is always positive. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. I've just always been in a position in my life that, you know, my parents, my dad really always said, you know, you want something, you got to go out there and get it. You got to fight for it. You got to earn it. You got to work hard for it. And being a part of a group of people that can help me get there, I didn't earn it. I didn't fight for it. I didn't work hard for it. So that's why I'm friends with all of them. Well, all the ones that I know. Um, but I just don't, I'm just not, I don't call myself a part of that. Um, because I I feel very um, lucky to have them as my friends. Um, all of them, from Ed to, you know, everybody, LRB to Flip to... You know, you name it, just everybody you can name. Um, everyone that I know, that I've met, I, you know, I feel real special, you know. Uh, but if I don't do it myself, if I don't come on here and, um, and put in my time, you know, I've been on here a long time. I've been on here probably two years, a little over two years. So if I don't put in my time and all of a sudden I just hit a thousand, I'm going to be like, what? You know, and that's what I thought when I got on here. I thought I was going to come on here and, you know, a month later I have a thousand subscribers because my son would watch these dudes on here playing video games and stuff. Man, I have like 500,000 subscribers. I'm like, wow, you know these guys you know they just play video games but you know it all comes down to and i've learned it, it all comes down to uh you know content uh the the attraction of your content what you're talking about um you know and uh the age you know of your viewers you know and how interesting it is i don't play video games um i do joke a lot and uh you know a lot of people tell me i should do stand up um, I just don't get on to that, get on that in here. Uh, I don't know why. Um, I don't know. I just never decided to like, just start goofing off and cracking jokes. Um, because the people at work, literally they start laughing. They're like, dude, we haven't, you know, heard of a guy like you in a long time. I'm like, what are you talking about? They're like, you really need to go do stand up." And I'm like, I just, I just like being funny. If I can make somebody laugh every day that I get up or I go to work, then, you know, I believe that, you know, I did something positive for the day. So, um, <laughs> some of us have to work hard, Terry. We don't all have your hair. 
That is hilarious. Wait, we have to work hard for YouTube? Son of a bitch. Yeah, it's, I've been calling it aquariums as therapy. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, I'm a sippy, hippie fishies. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Wait, here before I forget, aqua balls. This is what I'm saying. Look, I was at 819 when I started on. Now I'm 835 something. Aqua balls had a party that he hit a thousand, right? Aqua balls ain't at a thousand. He's under a thousand. A lot under a thousand. At least that's what it said before. Or is it not anymore? So that YouTube's really weird um, lately. Uh, let me see. <laughs> 980. 980 subs. So he's down 20 subs from the other day when he had 1,000. That's some crazy stuff, you know? Uh, it's really weird. I don't know. It's disheartening sometimes. So I've got 30 subscribers after one hour. They were all gone. See? See what I'm saying? Where did they come from? Where did they go? Uh, hey, as, um, as uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, oh, boy owns uh, Tesla. He says uh, they're all bots, just like everybody on Twitter. He says that it's all bots. So there's a huge percent of just bots. They're not even humans on there. Yeah, they come and go, George, but 30? You know, that's a lot. Huang Nguyen, welcome, welcome. No joking, loud and fish fam. You're right. Yeah, I know after leaving Dan King Aquatics Live the other day, I earned, yeah, you earned it. I need 3,200 watch time. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. See, my watch time's up. I got all that good stuff. It's just, uh, I think my biggest thing was I haven't been streaming. Um, You know, it's, uh, it just, it gets hard when you stay away for a while, you know, working. Um, You know, because I'm, I'm out of it. You know, I come do my stuff, do my tanks and everything, but I'm out of it. And it's like, well, what the heck do I talk about? So that's why tonight's um, topic was um, uh, um, I was reading uh, stuff. Purple shrimp, what is good mix? What is good mix? What to make purple shrimp? Bro, you got me. My shrimp come from the masters in Taiwan that my purple shrimp, my purple pintos come from the masters over there. Seriously, the masters. I don't, I don't know what they did to make them. My metallic purples come from over there. But, uh, hey, picking up cichlids. Welcome, welcome. But, uh, so that's why tonight's, um, uh, topic because um, I wanted to know what people thought about because like being down here in the basement I have all these windows you know I have glass block but then the windows open up you know they, they got the little screens on them so over there they have them, but right here and then that's why this is hanging down because that one's open, so the fresh air comes. I got one, two, three, four. I have four down here. The one in the storage room over here, I never got a window in it. I figure what to, what, for what? You know, all I wanted was crosswinds and that, you know, because the wall doesn't go all the way up. I mean, it goes up to the joist, but it doesn't go above that, so all the air comes out. So instead of wasting the money, I didn't do it. But my question was, is with, this win with these windows open at night, if it's 82 in the afternoon or 84 in the afternoon and it goes down to 56 and then the next day it goes up to 82 and then it goes down, you know, to 50, you know, eight, then it goes up to 79 and then it goes down to 48 and it goes up to 88 and then it goes down to 64. Do you think with the air coming in that window, if if it changes the temperature of the tank or 
with anything with the with the heavier the air the the lighter air the warmer the colder you know the humidity the humidity drops do you think with it being by open windows that it can or just the temperature changing um i know they're not large bodies of water so maybe it's a half a degree or degree but it's going up and down every night so think about you having a pond outside Ponds are a little bigger, but do you think that those little amounts of temperature change um, can cause breeding within shrimp, uh, fish, you know, guppies, you know, stuff you put outside, you know, I mean, even big fish. I mean, if it comes down to a discus and stuff, you know, but they're warm all the time. They're really not, uh, you know, everything in here is cold. You know, I don't have heat on anything. I mean, I have I have it on my 125. I keep that at 75. The puffers, I keep at 82. Goldfish, I keep ice cubes in that tank. Um, but, uh, you know, do you believe that the temperature going up and down can... Uh... Now, people say, oh, well, it's a, it's a larger body of water. And it just getting a little cool at night, um, you won't see that big of a swing in temperature. Of course you won't, okay? You don't see that big of a swing in temperature, but is it enough to, um, to uh, uh, you know, kick in breeding? Is it enough, you know, for males and females to, to start you know, doing what they do, is it enough for, uh, you know, shrimp, uh, you know, females to molt so they could, uh, you know, get pregnant? Um, or is it only the, the, uh, the, the seasons, you know, and the seasons change, you know, because a lot of people say, well, my shrimp don't breed in the wintertime. Or, they do more during this season or less during this season. They don't do so much in the hot seasons. You know, do you believe it's the seasons or do you believe it's the temperature? Or do both play a part? So that was a thought of mine today with the windows being open because, you know, in the daytime, it's uh, like today was, today was low. I think it was only 78 or something. Let me see. 75 but it's going down to excuse me it's going down to 49 then tomorrow 69 then 48 then wednesday 60 with 81 percent chance of rain 55 as a low then it's going 81 90 then 69 and 63 so see even our our highs for the day are changing drastically so the huge up and that huge down, I mean, you're, you're dropping 30 degrees, 27 degrees, you know, from one day to the next. <clears throat> so that was a question of mine. MFTAQ, what is going on? Thank you for showing up and picking up. Could you send me or Foxy an email, please? What do you do when it gets hot? What is hot temperature for shrimp? Um, well, I don't say it's kind of, that's kind of a good question. Uh, I'm in a basement, uh, Mr. Nguyen. Um, I, I don't, I don't have, uh, heaters and I don't do anything for, uh, heat because in the summertime when it's hot outside, uh, my wife, she runs the air conditioner. Uh, she does not like to be hot. I don't mind being hot. I don't like humidity. Uh, it's, you know, it's hard. Uh, it just, I'm one of those people that like need to move someplace dry when I get older. You know, it'd be easier on my breathing, but uh, I've been like that since I was a kid. I don't like humidity. Humidity is just not my friend. So anyways, we have air conditioning and it comes down here. So, <sighs> I'm not tired. I'm just not used to being up at 1030. Um, so my wife keeps in the wintertime, we keep the heater at the furnace at 70. 
to keep 70 degrees in the home. And that's probably because it'd probably go less. Uh, I don't know. I'd probably go turn it up behind her, but it'd probably go less if my mother didn't live here and she wasn't elderly. Um, but in the winter, in the summer times, we keep that AC at 72. So more or less, my my water is always around. Well, no, in the winter time, it's probably about 60. <clears throat> Let me see what it is right now. 70 so it's 70 but it's been like almost 90 outside um so i get lucky being in the basement but hot for shrimp is uh i'd say i don't know if there's a temperature where it's dangerous for shrimp i mean maybe in the 90s late 80s Probably like anything over maybe 85. Um, uh, let me see. Maybe over 82. Let's say over 82. Because um, I've had them in really warm water before. Um, at least up to 80, 78. Yeah. So let's say 80s, but I'd say 80s the cap. So give it 80 the max because anything below 80, you know, you, you they're, uh, the metabolism is just going to run really fast on them. Uh, the faster metabolism, the less they live. Um, you know, and some people sometimes don't mind because they get them uh, to have so many babies, They, you know, all this and that. And um, hey, what are you doing, dick? What are you doing? Huh? What? Come on, go, go, no, upstairs, go. Go. Sorry. <laughs> don't ever get a beagle if you don't want anything that's sitting around that's edible to be eaten. Um, but yeah, that's the only thing I think it, if it goes up, I mean, it just depends. Um, I mean, I've sent shrimp in heat. If they sit in the heat, direct sunlight too long to kill them in the box. But around 78, I think is about the hottest I kept them. Neos, they did really good. A baby's galore, really good. Um. So I'd say too hot, probably in the 80s. Yeah, probably anything over 82 would probably be too hot. I mean, it, I don't know if it'd kill them, but, you know, I just don't know. I've never went that hot, so I'm not sure. Air temps change a lot faster and longer, and in nature, even large daily temp changes happen. Never seen a problem. Yeah, I don't see a problem. I'm wondering if it's... Uh, um. If it if it uh, is a you know something that like gets the fish and shrimp and everything to spawn more, you know, to uh, like guppies to you know females have more babies, um, stuff like that, you know, because I you know you do water changes, you know, and that can entice them. That's why you never want to like do a water change when you have pregnant shrimp. Pregnant females, if you do do a water change, you want to drip it in. I don't drip water changes. Um, I just run it in slow. I don't drip it in. But if I had pregnant females, uh, I would at least just slow it up some. Because if she gets too, if she feels the water change too much and it entices her to, to molt, then when she molts, uh, there's almost 100% chance that she'll leave the berries behind. They'll be stuck to where pleopods were. Then she's gone and all those berries will die. So you got to be careful when you're doing water changes with shrimp. But, um, you know, is there something that, uh, you know, that's positive? I'm saying it's not a negative thing, but I'm saying even those little amounts, you know, because, you know, fish know, you know, when it's daylight, when it's night out. At least mine do because, you know, I don't run the lights all day. The light, you know, comes up in the morning, lights the tanks up, goes down at night, 
you know, I turn the lights on every once in a while, but not much at all anymore. So fish for sure. I'm new to shrimp. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah. I know it takes a long time for water to change temp, but even if it's half a degree, if that happens every day, you know, at nighttime it goes down a half degree and daytime it goes back up that half a degree. You know, well, that little bit of that little A B change. Now, wait till summer hits and it's 97, 98 degrees outside. You know, it's just, uh, just something I just, uh, I was just thinking. Just a thought, just a thought. Because see, these tanks are across from the window. So those tanks are right in front of the window. So all these tanks over here probably would never even you know, be bothered by it. But those tanks over there, like uh, the Solowasi tank is right here, but it's got a glass lid on it and it has the heater in it, you know, because they have to stay warm. So I think it's both. Yeah, temp is only one factor in bringing food, lunar, daylight, duration, etc., etc. No, correct, correct, correct. I just, uh, I just didn't know. I just uh, thought I'd ask to see what people thought. You know, it's uh, because if your food is right and this is right and that's right, you know, it, could that little half degree really do something? You know, I mean, it's a it's a thing to think about because if it is, you know, is it good to have a tank that you want to want to breed? Um, well, it's kind of like they say, uh, you know, with plecos. Plecos is a huge thing. You do water changes, right? And uh, let's say, you know, your pleco tank is at 70 degrees all the time, room temperature. So you do room temperature. Well, if you want them to breed, what do they say? Do a water change. That's a few degrees less. Uh, and it'll entice them to breed. Um, my... Uh, Friends from Taiwan say the same thing. When I tell them, hey, these shrimp aren't breeding, they say, uh, do a water change with, with colder water. And I'm like, really? They say, yeah. So I'm like, all right. So, you know, um, these are things that are told to me. So I just figure out to ask. Um, can you have small fish with shrimp? Yes, you can. Um, that's like uh, the question of all questions, huh? Um, I don't know if I, if I said the best fish to have with shrimp or guppies, um, I don't know. I don't know if that would be some of the best fish to have with shrimp, I think, or guppies. Um, some of the best tanks I've ever had, uh, with shrimp in them or with guppies and, and shrimp together, where that mix. Um, I don't know if it's something about, I don't know. It's just something about, like, what's in their poop, or I don't know. I don't know if it's, uh, you know, when you feed them, they don't eat all the food. It goes to the bottom. They get fed a lot. Um, I don't know. There's something about guppies and shrimp. Um, it's kind of just like, uh, there's another gentleman's channel that I watch and he says that, um, he puts, uh, like, uh, mollies or platies with, uh, some of his cichlids and he puts cherry shrimp in with them. And he goes to take those, he'll go to farm the fish out of the bucket you know, to, to like move them or go through them and take out all the bat, the males that don't have a lot of color and stuff. And they find hundreds of shrimp. So I guess it all comes down to, um, uh, well, the biggest thing is, uh, do they have places to hide? Um, if you have a whole bunch of detritus and plants and everything, uh, uh yeah, you'd be fine. Rock piles, um, but really, I think a planted tank, rock piles are cool. I have a thing with rock piles. Um, rock piles, uh, they look cool. I have them. 
the biggest negative about rock piles is they hold all the trash. They're like big trash cans. If you go to pick up a rock pile, all the shit goes everywhere. I mean, just everywhere. So if you have a planted tank, then the shrimp can live all up underneath the leaves, eat all the biofilms and everything. And there's not like trash everywhere. The fish can swim through, eat everything on the bottom that's there. They poop everywhere. The shrimp can go behind them. Fish can swim through the plants, but the shrimp can hide. So the fish can go through there and the shrimplets, you know, they have a good chance to hide. Rock piles, they can hide too, but rock piles is, uh, you know, I don't know if anybody's ever gone to clean a tank or reset a tank and go to move a rock pile. Stinks. Stinks like the Dickens. I mean, most tanks stink anyways, but rock piles are totally disgusting. Um, But, uh, you know, a rock pile that stinks like that probably um, holds a lot of beneficial food, you know. So, uh, you know, it could be positive for uh, shrimpies. Um, But I have rock piles in there, 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 there. (laughs) There, there. I mean, I have rock piles in all of them, almost. But uh, a lot of them, I don't have rock piles. I have plants. The hooker moss is a big thing. Uh, they go in that hooker moss and you can't see them. Then next thing you know, you'll see 30, 40, 50 shrimplets come out. And you're like, what the hell? And then all of a sudden, the shrimp start to come out. And, you know, they were just living in there doing their thing. And it's like, hmm, okay. Collaboration of curiosities. Good evening. Good evening. It's good seeing you. Papa Shrimp, what's up? There's a... uh, No, it wasn't... um, It wasn't uh, somebody from where she lives. I was just doing these shows and I thought it was... uh, I could have swore somebody was just... uh, at a show I just did there from where she lives. But yeah, good to see you. Good to see you. I am. I am. Uh, that's another one. If you're not uh, subscribed to Collaboration of Curiosities 2.0, please go and do that. That's Adele. Um, I don't want to get into uh, anything, uh, but. <clears throat> Adele had to change the name on her channel. No big deal. But uh, Adele's channel is real cool, especially if you're a, a late night hoot owl. Um, you know, she, she'll she do some later night shows because of where she lives, Australia. I believe it's Australia. But, um, you know, she's a really good person. She's really kind. Um, and if you're not part of her channel, you're really missing out because she's pretty funny. So, um Blake Rumball Aquamate. <clears throat> no, uh, I I was uh, no 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 no. I was doing a show um, over here, being a carpenter. Um, there do uh, there's a big huge building. Just think of this, where thousands of people show up, um, and they're the show uh, that's going on. It starts tomorrow. Is about three uh, D printing. But it's not 3D printing like this 3D printing. It's uh, 3D printing like military 3D printing. They're printing. It's it's the craziest stuff I ever saw. Uh, They're they're 3D printing with copper and aluminum. Really crazy. It's really cool. But uh, yeah, I've never seen uh, never seen it before. But anyways. People come from all around the world uh, to set up, uh, you know, Germany, everywhere to set up these booths because they work for these uh, these companies from all around the world. And they come here because it's a big trade show. Um, And in Detroit, it's one of the biggest places. It's where they do the auto show where all the new cars, uh, you know, all the companies, Fords, Cadillac, uh, Chevy, uh, Buick or yeah um lincoln you know just everyone's all the foreign cars honda hyundai all that stuff everything new um volkswagen everything 
uh, they all come. So you meet all these people from around the world. Um, that's why I enjoy doing it because you know it's uh, it's a cool thing. Um, but uh, so yeah, there was somebody that oh god, what was it? He, I was talking to him. I said, "Where are you from?" And he said, "Australia." I said, "Oh well," I said, uh, "I know a couple people from Australia." I said not personally, but but yeah. But I always like to tell. Um, when I had my accent, I used to watch your show all the time. But uh, ever since I had to become a, a positive member of society and go back to work again, uh, I've been missing a lot of everybody's stuff. So uh, that's the crappy part. But yep, check her out. If you're not uh, resubscribed to her new channel, hop over there and subscribe to her new channel. But what is this? Ten thirty. I went twenty one. I gotta get off here in a minute. Everybody's in bed. I don't want to be loud and keep anybody up. So yeah, they're not not much new. Um yeah, not much new at all. Working a lot, trying to take care of these tanks. Oh, we got the new pool put in, doing a lot of work around that. I'm doing a lot of uh, landscaping around it and stuff. Uh, um, putting uh, pots, plants around it, you know, going to have flowers all around it. We're not doing gravel and rocks around this one. Uh, that wasn't my vision. So I got uh, five yards of soil, topsoil. We put it around the pool, and uh, um, there's a bunch of other spots uh, that I needed to do it around my property. Um, you know, they had low areas and stuff that I wanted to lift up for, like, when I mow the grass, you know, the the mower goes down in it. And then got to fill up all the pots. And then probably tomorrow, get the wife, we'll go up to the flower place, go buy flowers, um, and we plant them in these pots. And... Uh, There'll be flowers around the pool all year. So that's what we're going to do for that. But, uh, yeah, maybe get a little more fishing in tomorrow. Not too busy of a schedule. But uh, I'm out. Thanks for the last year. All right, Bobby. Yeah, I'm going to be taking off here, too. So I've been working, too. i got to pull my finger out and get some content going on the new channel. Working on other things. It's a... Uh, Uh, no, it's down on purpose. It lets the air in from the basement window, uh, you know, because it blocks everything. If I if I keep it blocked, it'll just blow the air behind the tanks. But, uh, yeah, that was my thing is, uh, you know, going back to work, it's, uh, you know, just be honest. When I was hurt, you know, it was just uh, my everyday thing was content, content, content. What can I come up with? What can I think of? What can I make that, you know, is interesting? What what do people, you know, what can I bring to the table today for, uh, you know, my subscribers and stuff? So, um, you know, I, you put a lot of work into it. Well, um, I'm not someone that can stay unemployed and do YouTube all day. Uh, I have to work. So, um, uh you know, going to work all day and stuff like that, you know, it's hard to, you know, think up content, you know, because I'm not in here doing it every day. So, like, today I I took my my GoPro out and, um, you know, wore that chest thing and I did some fishing, just video a little bit of it because I have to learn how to use it, what speeds, uh, you know, 4K, blah, 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 you know, what takes the best video, can you hear me good on it? You know, stuff like that and, uh, turn it on and off and, you know, just all that. And maybe, uh, turn on the voice control thing, you know, but so maybe I can bring some fishing, uh, stuff on the channel too. So, um, 
you know, just uh, I'm trying. But uh, yeah, work's work's become a big deal. You know, so much to where I'm just like, I mean, I literally have nothing. So today I was like, oh, I want to stream. I want to stream. And I was like, man, I, I wonder if I should close these windows. I was like, oh, wait a minute. That's a good thing to talk about. That's a good topic. You know, if you have a fish tank by a window and the temperature goes up and down every day, um, is that, you know, will that make your fish or shrimp, uh, you know, possibly want to breed, uh, you know, even with a half a degree difference? You know, will the, will the humidity from outside create more pressure around the tank, you know, with the water, um, you know, and then the humidity goes away. Uh, does anything happen when it rains outside? Um, you know, do your fish act differently on any of that stuff? You know, these are all things because, you know, uh, when you're outside and it rains, they say the best time to fish is like right after a rain or even during a rain. Um, I used to do that when I was a kid. So, you know, these are all good uh, good questions. Whoop, whoop, up to 822, $30, make me holler. <laughs> See? <laughs> Watch. <coughs> <coughs> I was just up to 834. See? See, you guys, I told you. When old boy said that earlier, he said, oh, look, he's at 834. I was like, it's impossible. I was at 819. Now I'm at 822. I just showed you guys this just a little while ago. But when old boy was on here, my number blew up. But he's gone. And now my number went down. So... Yep, there's there's something in there. So I mean, uh, it's crazy. But all right, let me uh, let me call it a night. Um, like I said, I gotta get off of here. Luke's in bed. I don't want to keep him up. Um, coincidence? I think now. Yeah, go ahead. Thank. Yeah, see, he's gone. When he showed up, he's the one who said my number went up, and I went and looked, and it went up. From 819 to 834, he leaves, and now I'm 822. Hmm. I don't know. Don't know. But all right, everyone, have a good night. Thank you so much for uh, coming and hanging out. This is another show of Motor City Aquatics. So uh, I hope, uh, you know, I give you guys uh, and gals a little uh, something to think about. And if uh, anyone does have a comment, uh, please leave it below because I really think uh, it's it's uh, Grandfather Shrimp. Hey, hey, welcome, welcome. I think it's a good topic. You know, I think it's something that people can think about because, uh, you know, if there's small bodies of water, the temperatures will change. And do, what do you think? Uh, it does to your fish or shrimp or whatever you ha whatever you have in your tanks. Um, so uh, leave a comment. I'd like to see what everyone thinks, and uh, you know maybe we'll talk about this again next time or something. But all right, until then, thank you so much for coming and hanging out and spending time with me. Uh, next time I'll try to get this on even earlier. Um, but uh, so everyone, take care. Hit that like, y'all. Yeah, hit it, hit it. Bye, right, everybody. Thank you so much. And uh, until next time, take care. Stay safe. And uh, I don't even know anymore. Stay shrimpy, I guess. I mean, what do you say when you have fish and shrimp? I don't know. Stay wet. There you go. Stay wet. Till next time. Stay wet. Peace. See ya. Bye.